Good evening. We're going to wait a few minutes for the rest of the class to join. Okay, teacher. Okay, hello everybody, welcome to the class. It's nice to see you again and uh, to start the class of tonight. So uh, remember that tomorrow we won't have any class. So we're going to continue next Thursday, okay? Okay, and so we're gonna check about the platform as usual. That is this one. Okay, this is the class of tonight. And you will see there the question for you to participate if you want. 
there is no homework for tonight. So, and uh, of course, we're going to check about the attendance. Let's see. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Iliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Yeah. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Good. <laughs> Jessica Janari Cortez Diaz. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Good. And Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present teacher. Good. Teacher, good evening. Present. Ana Claudia here. Sorry. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Very well. Okay. Uh, welcome to the class again. As I was telling you, we are not going to have classes tomorrow, but of course, we're going to have classes on Thursday. Okay. So please remember that one. And uh, we are going to continue then with the classes. Remember that also we will have the presentations on Monday. And also for Monday, we need to finish the midterm test. So we have to finish unit one and unit two for this incoming Monday, which is very, very important, okay? Very well, my friends. So we're gonna start with a little presentation. So here we go, as usual, at the end of the, of the video, we're going to add some comments or opinions. Here we go. To give a successful presentation, they say you need to have a good beginning, a good ending, and keep them close together. And sure enough, research shows that audiences remember the first and last few minutes of a presentation long after they've forgotten most of what was said in the middle. Psychologists call this the primacy recency effect. But you might prefer to think of your opener and your close as two bookends holding up your talk. To do their job, they both need to be strong. Now, starting off by saying good morning, introducing yourself, thanking your audience for coming, apologizing for a small technical problem with your audio visuals and asking if people can hear you at the back is clearly not a strong opening. But neither is this. I want to talk to you today about the kind of world we, in the business community, are passing on to the next generation. What's wrong with it? It's short, direct, and boring. Let's see how it might have sounded. Environmental degradation, a declining economy, crippling taxes, chronic diseases, a life expectancy shorter than that of their parents, and $30,000 of debt for every man, woman, and child. This is the nightmare world we're passing on to our kids. Now that's a good opening. Watch how these presenters gain their audience's attention right at the start. Good morning. 
Sometime in the early 1980s, a business traveler called a low-cost carrier called People Express to reserve a flight. He was kept on hold for so long, he thought to himself, either this airline is incredibly busy or incredibly inefficient. Needless to say, the flight was never booked and People Express went out of business in 1987. The name of the business traveler was Richard Branson, who, recognizing a great business opportunity when he saw it, went on to launch Virgin Atlantic Airlines. And the rest, of course, is history. But my question to you is, just how bad does your customer service have to be to turn a potential client into a competitor? There was a great book published a few years back called The Wisdom of Crowds by James Sirowiecki. In it, he refers to the popular TV quiz show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? which I'm sure you've all seen. As you may know, contestants can get help with questions they can't answer by either phoning a friend or asking the audience. And as you might expect, calling an intelligent friend helps. 65% of the time, in fact. But here's the interesting thing. The studio audience isn't selected on the basis of their intelligence. So how often do you think they're able to answer the question correctly? 25%? 33%? The answer is 91% of the time. Statistically, that's just amazing. And it proves the power of teams. I want to say a few things about winning. Did you know that in all the major golf tournaments of the last 25 years, the margin of victory has been less than three strokes? In Formula One motor racing so far this season, the average time difference between first and second place has been just over seven and a half seconds. And remember last Summer Olympics? In the men's 100 meters butterfly, the American swimmer won by one hundredth of a second. One hundredth. It was so close that the Serbian team, who won silver, even filed a protest. These days, in business as in sport, the difference between winning and losing is practically zero. But not quite. In every case, the winner has that vital edge. The figures I'm going to show you this afternoon demonstrate that we, too, have that marginal but vital edge. From your audience's point of view, the end of your talk might be even more important than the beginning. These are the words they will be left with after you stop. If you've ever been to a firework display, you'll know that the biggest, brightest fireworks are usually saved for the end. This doesn't mean you have to finish with a bang, but you do want to leave a lasting impression. Watch these presenters clinch the clothes. To summarize, whenever we have offered bonuses to incentivize our staff in sales, HR and manufacturing divisions, productivity has increased, in some cases quite dramatically. But as we saw in R&D, introducing pay by performance has had precisely the opposite effect. Incentivized research units were, on average, only half as productive as those working without added incentives. What are we to make of this? Well, quite simply, it seems bonuses really do make you work harder when your job is pretty routine. But when your job is creative, incentives just stress you out and actually make you less creative, not more. Clearly, we all need to go away and think of a fresh initiative for motivating our most mission-critical employees. Thanks a lot. As you know, it's a tradition in Asia to quote words of wisdom. So I'm going to be totally predictable and do the same. An ancient philosopher once said, a man who chases two rabbits catches neither. In our research, we've been chasing too many rabbits for far too long. It's time to stop to prioritize. If there's one thing we now need to do, in a word, 
it's this, focus. Thank you very much. At the preparation stage, a lot of presenters like to create their clothes first, so they know where they're going, and then work backwards, finishing up with an attention-grabbing opening. But whichever way you plan your talk, make sure you always give priority to the first and last three minutes. Okay, what did you get from this one? The opening and the ending is the key in the presentation and uh, it is important is the scenes that the people may uh, get in the memory for many times, even though they forget or forgot all of the scenes that we say in the middle. But the first thing, uh, fear of all, uh, get the attention. If the first thing is important, this uh, get the attention of the of the audience, and uh, with the ending you reaffirm, you uh, summarize, you uh, if solid get a solid uh, uh, closing to your presentation. That is important. Opening and ending. Very good. Perfect. So yes, actually. Uh, that's what the video says. I mean, do you remember that yesterday we were talking about the cover that has to be nice, right? And then the the opening has to get the attention of everybody. And of course, the closing is like a summarize, a wrap up, right? And then the call of act to action. So you need to check into that one. Very good. Any other comments on the video? This video com comes to my mind is like a, when you go going to start to watch so serious. Is the opening and the ending are good? You keep watching. Very good. That is a good comparison. I mean, it's like a TV show, right? Or, or a movie. When you start a movie, uh, the first minute has to be kind of interesting. Of course, they introduce uh, the uh, the characters, the people, the, scen the scenery, but you need to understand what is this about. So you get caught, right? And of course, the closing is important because it's the final impact that you are going to get. So it's exactly the same. It's like uh, narrating a book or, yeah, watching a TV show. So it's going to be exactly like that. Very good. Any other comments or opinions? When you are presenting something, uh, you have to be a little dynamic because it's not only the opening, it's only uh, continue, uh, get the attention of the rest of the people. So the opening is important, but uh, also you have to create a good environment and try to. Um, be a little dynamic and give some uh, ex examples to get that attention. There is. You are mute, teacher. You are mute. Yeah, yeah, I see. So you are right. So this is something very important because you need to get the attention of the people that are going to be there with you understanding what is this topic about getting interested into that one remember that if in the very beginning they are bored i mean the rest of the presentation is not going to be good enough very good perfect any it, other the, the, thing is, the thing is that uh, you know uh, so i don't know where i read this but I remember that uh, when you are um, getting some information or giving some information, the first five minutes is the most important because uh, you, you receive a lot of information. But if the presentation is very, very boring, you lose the time then. That is it. So yeah, yesterday, I, I guess we were, uh, we were speaking about that one, that some people, they speak and speak and speak. And at the end, I mean, you 
you don't know what they say, right? Because they speak too much and at the end, maybe they didn't make their point at the end of the presentation, many things happen. So of course we need to avoid that kind of situation. Good, perfect. Any other comments or opinion on the video? Okay, something that also is very important from the video is the way that you start. I mean, uh, most likely in El Salvador, we start like this. Uh, we start like, hello, good evening. My name is Eric and I'm going to talk about English. English is from England. English is very important. And, and we start speaking and speaking and speaking, right? So, but at the beginning, we need to say something that is important. We, we can say something in a different way. So for example, uh, I, I, I'm here to speak to you about something that changed my life. Something that is easy to do, but also needs a lot of persistence. And that is English. If you learn English, you will gain a lot of things, not only for opportunities for your job, but also for entertainment and so many things. And I'm going to tell you tonight how that changed my life, how English changed my life and how I, I can do many other things with English. But if you say something like that, it's going to be much more interesting that you, you just say uh, English is important. Yeah, everybody knows that English is important because of this or this other thing say the way that you are going to say something and mostly at the beginning and also at the end for the closing that is very very important another example is like movies okay i'm going to tell you about matrix that is one of my favorite movies because of the science fiction and the effects yeah but that is not not impacting right if you come and say imagine Imagine that we live in a simulation, in a computer. How would you feel if you realize that we don't live in the real world? So that happens in my favorite movie. My favorite movie is Matrix is talking about that one. So I will tell you a little bit more about that. So the way that you start, and of course, in that same way you need to finish, that is going to impact the audience in different ways. Okay, so that is something that we need to take in consideration and I expect you to do anything like that for Monday. I'm excited to check what you're gonna do on Monday. Okay, so uh, we're gonna check about uh, these little things that I found that is very interesting. Powerful words to use in presentations. So let's speak about this one. The introduction is going to be read by David. Okay, the power of words is immense and palpable when it comes to sharing ideas with others. The way you frame your sentence and you repeat specific words will affect how the audience preserves you, not just that. Well-selected power words can shape narratives around business, distort positively and negatively their perceptions, and impact the listener decision to purchase. That's why top copywriters and public speakers alike spend a great deal of time brainstorming different word combos and obsessing over the selection of action verbs, adjectives, and linking phrases. Granted, you not longer need to do that. Just grab a PowerPoint template of your choice and start populating if with our big list of power words. Good, so what did you get on this one? Okay, this, this is very, very, very important. The, the words have power, the word that we say, but uh, there are a specific word that uh, have, made, have more impact in the listener uh, for many reasons. And, and it, knowing the audience, knowing uh, who are talking to, we can uh, uh, know what we can use. Because like what you say about uh, learning English, if you are talking to the older people, you can uh, start with uh, Alzheimer's, is the worst enemy of the seniors. But do you know that if you learn a new, a new uh, language, you can 
uh, reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease. It is, you, you, you can get the attention of the people. It is important that the words have power and you have the right words, you have the, 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 the attention of the people. Very good. Perfect. So that is so true. Words are powerful in a positive and in a negative way, definitely. Yeah. So the words that we're going to use to express something is going to impact the audience, definitely. Not only that one, also the way that we use the words. So if you see when we speak, sometimes we go up and sometimes we go down, intonation and how you emphasize some words whenever you are speaking also is going to impact the audience. So those elements are very important and that's why we're going to check some words that are related to presentation, to speeches and things like that one. So it's going to be kind of interesting. So what are power words? Roxana, could you please help me with this one? Okay. <clears throat> what are power words? Power words are persuasive, persuasive words and persuasive. phrases that persuasive words and phrases that evoke, evoke, is correct? Evoke, yeah, evoke. Yeah. Both a positive or a negative emotional response or selection of verbs, adjectives and adverbs can convey different emotion from slight excite, excitement to rightful out, outrage. That's why public speakers, authors, and copywriters, copywriters always carefully choose their words to convey the right idea and sentiment. Public words and phrases can make the same idea sounds very different. Let's take Apple's famous slogan as an example, things different. You can also convey the same idea using other, ex other descriptive words. Don't think like everybody, everybody else. Think outside the box, be creative. Good, what do you get on this one? The main idea uh, is uh, that we, maybe we, we can express the, the ideas with different words. For example, if you are reading a book, you are um, finding a lot of maybe weird words, but it's weird for us because maybe it's not a common word for, for, uh, for us, but it's important to uh, use that expression because uh, maybe you can uh, share a um, more ethic idea, for example, or more, um, come on, let me see. Como sofisticada, how do you say sofisticado? Sophisticated, actually. So you can share a sophisticated idea with uh, different words, maybe uh, this group, for example, uh, also uh, are talking about everything, but always try to use common words. And when you are uh, presenting, you can use another words to sound story, to sounds very different, but the main idea is the is, is, is the same. So the thing is maybe sounds more formal. Okay. So yes, I mean, uh, the words that we're going to select to express some ideas are going to be important because you want to impact people, right? So for example, if you are um, in a meeting with a potential a client that is going to make a big deal for you, really, really, you want to impress that person. So it's not just to present the numbers. It's not just to 
to be there saying our company is the best, right? It's also choosing the right words, things that are going to impact other people and that is going to make them feel, oh, this is the company that we want, right? So this- Or maybe, when, sorry, maybe when you are looking for a new job, you need to uh, maybe get the attention of the audience that receive your presentation, but uh, it's your maybe your unique opportunity mm -hmm. to show that you know. So it's important when you try to select the correct word because if you for if if, if you do if you do um error maybe it it is the last um interview for you so it's important to select the correct word in the in all all the time very good so yeah the example that you provided is Amazing. I mean, in an interview, every word counts. If you say one word that is not the correct word, maybe that is the difference between you and other candidates, right? So only one word sometimes. Or maybe they, you use the same word, but you use it in a different way. So yes, the way that you speak, the words that we use whenever we want to express one or other thing are very important. And those are called power words words that are going to express the things that you really want to impact the other uh, people, the audience. Yeah, since today we're going to check about vocabulary, we're going to start right now. So what is to convey? Anybody, everybody's going to participate. So anybody, what is convey? Make an agreement? Mm. It might be. Uh -huh. We use it, uh, for example, uh, there is a, uh, um hi a stage in the app we use for drivers is personal convey so it's like the time they use in their own convenience something like that mm, interesting interesting what you say because it's part of that one yeah you know words have different meanings in this kind mm -hmm. of situation when you say uh, an adverse can come be different in emotion it's like transmit like uh, to express no. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, another word that we have here is slight. What is slight? A little. A little bit, yeah, with a little difference, right? Very good. And outrate. What is outrate? You can check the dictionary or a translator, but of course you have to tell me in English. I don't know what it is, but I think that is something that uh, in a superlative way, uh, so uh, like a uh, powerful emotion, something like that. But I, no. I am guessing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anybody has checked for that one right now? Because the context for us, like Siderman, to rifle of trade. Yeah, it's like a comparative, actually. Yeah, it's like to have a better rate or something. So this is a little bit better than the other thing that it might be similar. Outrate, you say, right? Yeah, this one, outrate. Uh, well, the meaning I'm finding is like saying profane words to someone. <laughs> Okay, deeper things, yeah, it might be in that context as well. Good. So think different. Don't think like, well, that's what we read right already. So the other part is going to be for uh, actually Ana Claudia. Okay. Uh, the source 12, tip please. Uh, that we one? can start from however. Okay. Let me just... Okay, however, each variation has a somewhat different uh, ring to it. Ultimately, your word choice also impacts how others perceive you based on your speech. 
Researchers found that word selection can have a massive impact on people, businesses, and society as a whole. Individual word choices can indicate the speaker's mental state and impact the outcomes of a negotiation. Business power words shape customer experience with the brand and affect conversations. Action words choose by the media influence public perception of a social issue. Interestingly, a group of researchers from Wilfrid Laurier University in Canada and Wharton in the US <coughs> also found that word choices impact the song's popularity by applying text uh, meaning analytics to billboards charts. The group found that songs with somewhat more unique texts perform better than those with pretty standard lyrics. A 16% differentiation in lyrical topics within a song was enough to properly higher than songs in similar uh, genres. Genders could be there or genres? Uh, genres, yeah. Mm, okay. Good. Genres. What do you get at this? Totally agree because the words, uh, I can see it in, in, I guess one time I told you that in my company, they pay for experts from linguistic thing and neurological things just to create the speech or tell us the, the words that will create impact in our daily speech with the customers because we do outbound as well. So they invest a lot of money in, in those investigation and resources and people, science people to create all of that. And I truly believe it because when we use impact words in the business to convince or to show the prospect what the product does or all the benefits they can get with it. Yeah, I can see it's totally different. The impact uh, with words in English is totally different than the impact with uh, different the same word in Spanish. We, we use both, so it's kind of different. And um, they uh, uh, compose letters. The text message could be just one, one uh, line or two lines. It, it's the same example as the apples. Uh, the Apple slogan that with specific words, two words, short messages, they are impacting and leaving the message what they want. And yes, in songs, I can, yeah, I can say that, yeah, people mm, sometimes it's not effective just for the rhythm. Now they are looking for lyrics. Um, I don't know. I don't, I, I'm like disconnected from from actual music or artists or singers. Uh, but I don't know, this guy, the one name is Bad Bunny, something has to do because you see all the concert, they're in US and, and they are crazy for this boy. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, there is, I guess there is a state, I don't remember if it's California state, that they declare a day in the name of, in order to honor, this guy, and I say, what? <laughs> I don't know. And the other four people, yeah, uh, it's totally different. The impact word, the power words you use for different uh, stages or situations, yes, they help or they cannot uh, help you. Mm -hmm. Very good, perfect. So I totally agree. I mean, uh, and the phenomena that you are describing is true. I mean, I don't like reggaeton at all, uh, but it's uh, <laughs> me neither. <laughs> I mean, even even people, even people in the U.S. that are very famous, they are looking to get something with these artists. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's because I mean the impact that has worldwide because of, you know, the uh, the people that listen to that kind of music in Spotify and other um, platforms is is a lot. And mm -hmm. yes, I mean, they they use certain words. Of course, the word uh, or the the one that sells the most in that kind of music is sex, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they they put that in all the songs. Uh, they, 
they put it there and it's, it's pushing, it's pushing there. So uh, yeah, words, whenever we are going back to business, right? Whenever we use one or other word or the way that we use some words are going mm -hmm. to impact people. And we need to understand that one. So in the future, mm -hmm. whenever we want to really, really go and get into the minds of the people and make them feel in mm -hmm. a certain way, then we have to choose the words, the perfect words for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are studies all around the world that uh, they are updating on a daily basis for different words, impact word. The What I've seen is the shortest uh, sentence, the better. I don't know. Like yeah that is true that is true so yeah it, there are like different words even the rhythm of the music sometimes is kind of mm -hmm. the same on other sound that you heard a long time ago mm -hmm. very good so it says the takeaway our word choices have a profound impact on how others perceive us as well as the actions they take afterward thus if you want to be a rock star presenter, you need to choose your words carefully and prioritize powerful words. Very, very good. And this is what we're doing right now. We're becoming rock stars presenters, right? So we're going to be there in front of people on Monday or in the future in any kind of presentation in English or in Spanish. And we are going to make a very good job. So we're going to get into the emotions of people, right? Okay, and it says a list of powerful words to use in uh, presentations. Uh, okay, this part is going to be for Dora Elizabeth. Okay, list of the powerful words to use in the presentation. The English language has about uh, 100, no, yeah. One more back. Uh, 70. Uh, 70 tons of Good. words in the use. But an average person has an activity vocabulary of 20 tons and 30 tons of words. Among them, is a smaller range of power adjectives in action verbs to make your presentation as suspicious, more impactful. Okay, until Action. there, uh, what uh -huh. did you understand on this one? Uh, it's very important to choose the uh, rewards for presentation. But uh, it, because uh, is uh, for uh, speeches is is powerful the the los adjectives or actions or lo, lo verbos the verbs. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yes, so it Perfect. Thank you. So in my, my friends, English has about 170,000 words. That's a lot. But an average person uses around 20 to 30,000 words. And we're speaking about English speakers. Of course, here we that we are just learning English, we are going to have less vocabulary. So it's very important for us to, to know more words, right? And not only to know the meaning, but to use the words. So that is very important. So all the words that we know, the new vocabulary, for example, when we read, sometimes we don't check the vocabulary, but I believe that you write the words, right? So you say, oh, that is a new word. And then you go to the dictionary and look for the word, and then you try to use it. That is the way that we need to learn vocabulary. Not only to say, ah, that is a new word and get the meaning, but to use it, right? So if we do that one, we're going to increase our vocabulary and we are going to find words to use in a better way. Definitely. Okay, so it says action verbs to use in your PowerPoint presentation. So the first thing that we're gonna check is about uh, verbs. Let's see, uh, Jessica Janari.
Which one, teacher? Oh, good. Uh, here where it says action verbs. To action use. verbs to use in your PowerPoint presentation. As the name implies, action verbs denote some dynamics. State, move, movement, result, etc. We use action verbs in our everyday speech. A lot of a lot of to describe what and, and how we do things. As author Elvi, Elvines Brooks White write, write, uh, write with nouns and verbs, not with adjectives and adverbs. The, the adjective has, hasn't been built down, can pull a wick, a wick or in a, in a current inaccurate. noun of inaccurate, inaccurate, none of, of a tight place. Uh, strong verbs don't need adverbs to reinforce them. Compare these two statements. I walk, I walk quickly to, towards the doors. I rush out, I rush out of the floor. Of the okay. door. Okay, there. So, what did you understand there? Um, I think it is not necessary to use in in um, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I think it's adjective or adverb. I think is uh, right with nouns and verbs. Say, uh, I think is the verbs are not necessary to. Um, to, to, to be strong, to sound strong uh, for a world presentation, I think. Very good. So that is it. Uh, yes, of course, adjectives and adverbs are important, but the most important things are going to be nouns and verbs. Nouns because it's going to identify what are you talking about or what is the object of something, and the verbs is the action. And it's a very good example, the one that is there. I mean, I walked quickly towards the door or I rushed out of the door. So if you see, the meaning is kind of the same, but we can use one verb only to describe the whole thing, right? I rushed. I mean, I was walking quickly out of the door, right? Out the door. So that is it. So sometimes, yeah, we use adverbs and adjectives to reinforce, but it's just to reinforce. Some nouns and uh, verse are the most basic, the most powerful that we can use. If we use properly some actions, some verbs, some nouns, then you don't need to, to write or to say a lot of words. I mean, maybe you can use just one verb and then it's going to be explained everything in a better way. Okay. So it says actually, and we're going to continue with, let's see. Fernando Ernesto Cosme, is it possible for you? Not possible. Ileana Giselle. Yes, teacher. Good. Mm -hmm. From here. See, it's the, the first. Yeah, okay. the first. Uh -huh. The first sentence merely states the fact, but the second one better conveys the emotion, the urgency of getting out of the room. It adds color to the narrative and sets the right mood. In business presentations, action verbs help imply action to the user. They are good to use for both throughout the copy and the closing slide when you describe main action points, accomplishments, takeaways, next steps, results. As you refresh your slide deck, look for weaker verbs and then replace them with stronger synonyms. Some common offenders include state of being verbs such as um, does, do, could, might, etc. 
while they have their merit. Oftentimes, you can find a more descriptive alternative conveying an extra emotion. Two, verbs ending in ing, wishing, planning, forgetting, be bolder. Use present or past tenses instead. Verbs in conjunction, in conjunction with an adject adjective. Walked quickly, talked loudly, etc. Again, these can be replaced with snappier one word alternatives. What is Good. snap snappier teacher? Snap. Anybody knows what is the meaning of snap? Snap? Yeah, snap. Okay. He's uh, in the last in the last part, then in the last uh, sentence. No like a uh, I'm sorry. Uh, like uh, you take a uh, a copy uh, from something in that moment, or you could that one. Okay, yeah, it's something like uh, in this case, it's speaking about something that is have a uh, faster, so it can be replaced with snappier, meaning that one word is going to transmit better instead of and it's going to be faster mm -hmm. to understand because you are going to use one word only. Okay. Good. Uh, what did you get from this one, uh, Giselle? Mm, okay, that also the verbs are very important in a business presentation, not just the correct words or the correct speech, uh, because the verbs, well, they, they, they uh, transmit or, 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 well, through the verbs, you can say a lot of things. So you have to choose like the correct verb for your audience, very important, and can have a, a big impact into your presentation. Very good. So that is it. If you use the correct verbs, you are going to impact better there. The audience. Let's go back to this one. I mean, I walk quickly towards the door. I mean, that doesn't mean anything. It's just that you were walking fast, right? But I rushed. It means that you had an urgency, that you really wanted to get to the door. So something happened and you need to run and, uh, and be very fast. So, uh, yeah, you might say that it's kind of the same, but it's not the same. So you express a different feeling, a different emotion. The same happens with this one. So, uh, yes, of course, we can use any kind of verb, but we need to use the verb that is going to uh, correspond to the to the emotion, to the exact action that you want to represent. Good, so we have a list of powerful verbs to make your language more persuasive. But we're going to do an activity in this one. There are a lot that you can see. I'm going to ask you, what is the meaning? And then you are going to tell me an example using that word. So we're going to get more vocabulary today. So, for example, what is advance? Anybody? When you get an advantage about something? Something like that, yeah. You have an advantage. You are moving on. You are uh, moving faster. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's like like moving on, like getting an advantage, look, moving faster, like move on, right? So advance, an example with that one in any sentence, it doesn't matter. Well, maybe when you pay, maybe when you pay in advance, something. Very good, you pay in advance. I paid in advance my cell phone. Very good, because you won't have any problems, everything is fine, you moved. Uh, Faster, right, that payment. Very good. Accelerate, what is to accelerate? To go faster. To go faster. We're not going to uh, give examples of some of the words because of the time, but let's see. What is aspire? 
you can check vocabulary on the dictionary or translator, but remember that you are going to tell me in English. But what is- To decide something? To decide something, yeah, when you, yeah, it's like, like that one. An example with I aspire, anybody? I I will aspire to speak English very well. Very good. That is a good example. I aspire mm -hmm. to speak English very well. So that is uh, something that I is like a goal that I would like to get into that one, yes. right? Yes. So those words are something that we can use on presentations. Amplify. What is to amplify? Get louder. Louder to or, increase or intensity, increase. right? Increase, yeah. Very good. Amplify. So uh, let's use this word in an example. What would be a good example for this? Any example using that word? Yeah. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Uh, this this uh, word could you use? in order to amplify the range of, uh, for example, of a radar or something like this? Definitely, yeah, you can use it okay. like that. Okay, okay. Not, not, only, not only the voice. Not only the voice, yeah. For example, you can say, uh, we're going to amplify the territory where our cells are going to be experiencing this incoming Black Friday, so. It means that it's going to increase a lot, right? Good. What is alter? Anybody? To cause a change. To cause a change. Very good. So let's use that in a sentence. Anybody? Okay. You can say, for example, I altered the behavior of my employees by um, providing them the tools they need so they can work better. So that is something that impacts, right? So you change that behavior, in my end, that one. This one is an easy one. Achieve, what is to achieve? To reach. To reach, to to get a goal, right? So you know that one. What is to maintain? To keep something. To keep something, yeah, to, to keep on checking something so everything is working properly, good. What is encourage? Encourage is to... To cheer some, to cheer other people? To cheer other people, very good. An example with encourage? I encourage to you to learn more vocabulary in English, for example. Very well, that is a very good one. So the other one is entis. What is entis? Entis. Entis. You can look for that one. So we are gonna learn new vocabulary, good. It is. It is. Like uh, get something. Okay. Get something, okay. Very well, it's missing a little bit only. Okay, I will tell you, no worries. So, entis is like... like I'm sorry? Attract. Okay, very good. That is better. So, attract people when you offer an advantage, when you offer something that is going to be better. So, you can see that is a mm -hmm. verb that you can use for business. I mean, you can say, we entis our customers by providing uh, the best quality uh, on the products that we sell, for example. 
So, antis is a very good verb. Intrigue. What is intrigue? Something that is not clear. Something that is not clear. How can we use that one in a, in a sentence, any sentence? Something like he was intrigued by her behavior. Very good. So you can say that one, she was intrigued by his behavior. We were intrigued about this product. Okay, so something like that. Very good. This one is easy. Believe. What is to believe? That you are, are sure of something. Okay, when you when you actually are not able to see some facts about something, but you really know that something is going to happen, right? Very good. And what is then regard? Regard is regard. Mm. Is it to give a recognition? It's like a recognition when you care about, uh, when you are concerned about something, right? So very good. How we can use that one in a sentence? Actually, it's very common to to yes, use. This, <laughs> but yeah, I was going to say that actually that one that. Whenever we are finishing an email or anything like that, uh, it's very common to say best regards, sincere regards. So I really care. I mean, we really care about Thank you. Thank you, regards. Yeah. Like, um, greetings or something like this. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Will you please repeat? Like uh, when you say greetings, uh, como saludos. No greeting, because greeting is to say hello. But regards is like when you really care about something, when you're concerned. When whatever you say for me is very important, so something like that. Okay. okay, what is to convince? To persuade other people, maybe? Very good, persuade uh, other people. So how can you use that in a sentence? Don't convince me that Barça is better than Real Madrid. Okay, very good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So that will be a good example with convince. What about boost? Boost is like improve. Very good. To improve, to increase also something. Right? How can you use mm -hmm. that one in a sentence? Um, for example, um, I will uh, boost uh, the sales per month in our department. Very goal. good. I will boost, right? So I will increase. I will extend that one. Very nice. What is ignite? Ignite is something, star, something like a... Uh, 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 like a car, or like a, uh, a vehicle that have an engine. Okay, very good. So that is it. Ignite is like to start something, right, with power. Yes. So yeah, we use that a lot with a motor or engineers, something like that one. But of course, we can use that one. I mean, we we will ignite this business with this powerful product. We are going to sell to the people, anything like that one, right? Unite, what is unite? Unite, United Airlines is, a, <laughs> is a, something to get together. Okay, to put something together, very good. We're not gonna use that in example. What is a transpire? To sweat. To sweat, very good. So what would be an example with this one? Uh, she was so hard that she was transpiring. Very good, very nice, that's a good example. Next one, search, what is search? Search, search is, 
is storage. Increase. Increase. Okay, very increase. good. Mm -hmm. It will be something like increase. Anybody else? Is any other? Okay, yeah, it's like like a movement that is like a wave that is going to move you with power, something like that one is that you feel something that is moving you with power. We can say that one. Search. Mm -hmm. Good. Swell. What is to swell? Hello. Swell is um. uh, when you get a pain in in, in uh, your bones or if your muscles and in uh, I think it uh, go big. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Ah, okay, that last part is fine. It's very good. Swell. Yeah, swell is like an increase, a gradual increase in intensity. It might be in in anything, an amount of money or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Good, good. What is then to disrupt? Disrupt, disrupt is... Is uh, to interrupt something. Okay, yeah, that is it, to interrupt something. How do you use that in a sentence? Or, or, or is uh, something like uh, uh, change the direction of, of something? Because you can just say uh, the uh, the the, um, the cleaner interrupt the meeting, something like that. Okay, so yeah, that will be the cleaner. Yeah, but it's disrupt, sorry. <laughs> disrupt, uh -huh, very well. That will disrupt be the meeting. Okay. <laughs> Good. Uh, the next one uh, is rejuvenate. What is that one? I want to. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants that. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, to, to get younger, to be young again, very good. So, and uh, well, we're not going to use this one. Hamper, what is to hamper? Hamper, hamper is uh, something like a bag, like a, a, a pan for, for put something like bread or something like that. That is like a noun, but as a verb? Mm, as a verb, hamper, hamper. Okay. Hamper as a verb is like to avoid something to happen. So you hamper something hamper. to stop. So you can say, for example, stop. hamper your size by getting in a diet or anything like that. I don't know. Sabotage, what is to sabotage? Sabotage. Sabotage is to uh, to it's like when someone prepares like an attack to something not happen, like an event or plan in order to that plan or even fail. Very good. That is a very accurate uh, explanation. Nice. So it's to to do something to avoid something else to happen, right? So you sabotage that one. So you can say uh, sabotage your diet with this delicious hamburger, for example. 
Okay, what is a jeopardize? Put something in risk. Yeah, put something or somebody at risk. Nice. What is gain? Gain is to get something. To get something. It's like winning, but winning is more for contest or the lottery or something like that. Gain is when you gain weight. Uh, also, when you gain something for yourself, right? Okay, derive. What is derive? Okay, derive is like to obtain something uh, from some specific source. For example, we can say I derive my profit from the companies that I have. Something like that. And okay. act, what is act? Is to do something. To do something, very good. Okay, so we're going to continue with the other part of the verse after the commercial because we need to check the attendance. So let's see how it goes. Let me just check here. Okay. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Good. Darvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Good. William Alexander Ramírez Flores. Present. Good. Jessica Yanari Cortez Díaz. Good. I'm here. Good, good. Zuleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Good. Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present teacher. Very good. So let's continue with this list of new vocabulary. So let's see how it goes. Okay, the next one says smash. What is to smash? Smash is something like to push to I I can listen to smash potatoes. <laughs> Okay, that is a good example. So, smash potatoes. So, that is like, yeah, to grab something with force and uh, transform that one. Okay, so that will be it. Smash. Okay. The other one is uh, transform. What is to transform? To do different. Okay, to do, to transform something into other thing, right? So, the verb is like that. Improve. What is to improve? To get better? To do something or to get something better, right? Very good. How you can use improve in a sentence? I want to improve my English. Very good. I want to improve my English. Sore. What is sore? To rise. To rise something. Very good. In the air. 
supercharge. What is supercharge? Supercharge, if we want, all of us, we want in a charger for phones, <laughs> supercharge. Yeah, very fast, very powerful, <laughs> good. Engage, what is to engage? Engage is to get in a compromise, something like that. Okay, very good. How can you use that in a sentence, anybody? I, I was in an English with my girlfriend. Okay, very good. I was engaged with my girlfriend. Not anymore. Congratulations. Report. What is to report? Report is to present uh, to someone, to, to be presented. No. To be responsible to someone, maybe. Give a... Uh, Give an inform. Okay, give an inform to somebody to report what happened, something right. Very good. What is to update? The latest for something. Very good. When you need something with the most uh, current data, right? So mm -hmm. that would be it. Uh, change is going to be easy. What is change? Changes to to get something uh, different, to put something different, to do something in the other way. Very good. Explore. That's an easy one as well. Explore is uh, to go in the unknown path or no territory or. Search about something, right? Okay, search about something to go in a way or, or in a path or in a research that we don't know, right? Very well. Mm -hmm. Refine, what is to refine? Fine. Maybe like... Um when something passed to a uh, um, quality control like you you uh, shape something in order to get the way you, you want very good yeah refine is like when you remove bad things from good things right so you okay get something better in a better quality very good okay dream is a, an easy one what is to dream is something that we have today. <laughs> okay. But, we want, we have dream, many dreams. <laughs> dream is more than aspiration, something like that. Uh, yeah, dreams are uh -huh, something like, something that you would like to get, right? You have a dream. Yes. Good. Redefine. To say in a different way or to, to put in a different way. Oh, okay, to change something, right? Uh, define yes. in a different way. It's strategize. Strategize, strategize. Strategy is uh, the better way to do something. Strategize is, is, is maybe like the, the form that we do the, this kind of things to do Very the good. strategy. Yeah, when you have a different plan for you to yes. achieve something, good. Inspire, what is that? Inspire is, is something like you get the, something courage, so, so impulse something, or someone, sorry. Where, that is it. So encourage somebody by your actions, right? Yes. Bolster, what is bolster? Bolster, bolster is... I don't know that's bolster. Bolster is like to reinforce. To reinforce, to make something stronger, right? Very good. So what is a uh, propel? A propel, like, I hear that in the uh, navies, in the, the boats that uh, oh, have okay. a, a, that impulse. Very good, that is it. It's like to impulse, to push in 
certain direction. Very nice. What is a notch? Notch. Notch. Notch is to push. Someone like to push, yeah, like, but in a nice way, in a smooth way. What is to spark? To spark is something like shine. Like shine, very good. It's like uh, something in the dark that is sparkling, right? Okay, what is content? Then it's a kind of, of fight. Uh, the opponent in a fight. Okay, okay, yes. Very good. So yeah, when you struggle with something or fight with somebody, something or a situation. Very good. Fulfill. Fulfill is uh, to complement, to, to uh, complete. To complete, Something. very good. Actualize, what is to actualize? <coughs> is to get a day. <laughs> we have a day, the actualize is to get a day, to be updated. Very good, to be up to date, right? So yeah. make something real actually, because remember that um, when you say, do you remember when we say actually, <coughs> it's not at this very moment, at the current time, but is to, when you say uh, in real life, in reality, in real, something yes. like that, right? The real thing, the real uh, situation. Maximize, what is to maximize? Maximize is to get the better of the time or to get the better of the situation or to get the better of the plan. Okay, when well, you get the most out of something, right? Yes. Uh, capture, what is capture? Mm, something like when you get a picture, you capture a moment, you capture a, a impression, uh, uh, you capture a, a time specific. Very good. Achieve, we checked that already. Reinforce, what is to reinforce? Reinforce is something like not. Yeah, when you, you know that the other people know, uh, but then you provide yeah. more knowledge into that one we reinforce in part what is in part uh, to to give something to other people maybe authority maybe uh, i don't know responsibilities or something like that okay very good perfect Nice, so let's move on with the rest as powerful adjectives. So this part is going to be for, let me just check. Hey, Heidi, could you please help us and read the introduction of this? Sure, it's um, starting from, from powerful adjectives. Ah, uh, yeah, please. Okay, powerful adjectives to use in your presentation. The goal of objectives is to reinforce your nouns and verbs. Use them to convey specific emotions and set the scene for the audience. But be sparing, you are not writing a novel. Too many adjectives can make your slide deck look cluttered. As you as you'd have to skim or white space to fit longer sentences. Also, excessive use of adjectives can model the main idea and behind your key statements. Below is our quick collection of powerful adjectives you can use to punch, your, punch up your presentation. Good, so we're gonna check into that one right now, but you can see how important are adjectives. Here we can find a lot of adjectives, but if you don't know the meaning of that one, is I mean, you are going to be kind of lost, Like, but be sparring. Uh -huh, but what is sparring, right? And the other one is like, uh, look, clutter, him or white space. There are many adjectives that we can use. So we're going to check into those ones right now. The same situation. Okay, so the first one, it says, inspiring. What is inspiring? Uh, 
Mm, for me, it's like, uh, for example, awesome is like uh, something incredible, but so how, how inspiring it's a, something that it's incredibly inspiring to you, maybe. Very good. That is it, actually. So something that is it's more than inspiring. It's more than only inspiring. It's something that is just say, my goodness, I, I want to be like that one, right? Okay, next one is astounding. Mm -hmm. Something like amazing. Something like amazing. How can we use that in a sentence? It was a stunning presentation. Uh -huh. Okay, what's outstanding in presentation? Good. A rare, what is rare? Is it like strange? Like strange, very good. The next one something, is- uh -huh. Something that is not common. It's not common, so yeah, that is true. Rare is not always bad, right? Exquisite. Exquisite is- uh... Delicious. Something like delicious. Something like delicious. That is a pleasure to see you write whatever yes. you are doing, right? What is a jubilant? To be very happy. Very, very happy. How can we use that one in a, a sentence? It was a jubilant uh, about his newborn baby. Oh, very good, that is a one. I mean, he was jubilant about his new baby. So that is a very good example. Blissful, what is blissful? It's very, very similar. Blissful is a joyful, a happy, a something like that. Very good. So that is it. You can see that there are many words. Of course, remember that there are different levels. So for example, it's not the same to say pretty than to say beautiful than to say gorgeous, right? Gorgeous is more than beautiful and beautiful is more than pretty. The same happens with these words. Yeah, uh, but, what... but there needs to be a, a, a dictionary that uh, give us a the specific use of, of the word because in Spanish we we something know what word is better but in English because uh, of the lack of experience we know that maybe are synonymous but uh, but uh, maybe the use is not the same uh, I think that needs to be a uh, as some, some, some kind of dictionary that gives you the, the right, the right use of, of this word. Because I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm inspiring and I'm uh, interesting all of the world. Actually, that is true. And the biggest uh, dictionaries, I mean, the ones that are very big, they are going to show you some charts for you to compare adjectives or adverbs okay, are okay. kind of yeah, similar. Right. Yeah, so in some dictionaries, you are going to be able to find that one. I believe in, in uh, over the internet, of course, you will be able to find things like that one. So um, when to use this or this other, and you are right. In English, we have much more adjectives than in Spanish. And that's why sometimes we say, for example, awesome uh, or amazing is kind of the same, but in English, it's not the same, right? Good, good. So, uh, brilliant. What is brilliant? Brilliant is uh, something like I uh, smart or or uh, do something in a very good way. Very good. So that is it. Brilliant is like something that is, uh, I mean, clever, right? Very nice. Mm -hmm. Dynamic, what is dynamic? Uh, something that is not static, that is constantly moving on. Very good. Like people, we are dynamic, right? We are not the same that we were a year ago, mostly in English. Uh, burgeoning. 
fruit joining, something like blossom, like flowering, like emerging. Very good. So yeah, it's something that is like growing, like uh, moving up, right? Okay. How can we use that in a sentence? Let's see. Wow, fruit joining. <laughs> <laughs> that is a kind of word that we don't know how to use. <laughs> yes, because it's, a, it's difficult. Burjoning. Well, you can say, for example, our business is burgeoning. Uh, something like that, yes. Uh -huh. yes. Come to our company. We are in the first stage. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Breathtaking. What is that one? Breathtaking. When I run 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> breathtaking is that you you lost your your <laughs> what your uh, yes your breath <laughs> yeah it takes out your breath right? it takes your breath yes. away so uh, yes breathtaking is like that one like when you see something and you are <gasps> like that one right it's like my goodness it's, it's right? something amazing astonishing so, so, impressive. So, so. impressive very good Okay, uh, how can we use that in a sentence? Breathtaking, let's see. Breathtaking is uh, the, the, the exhibition was breathtaking or the innovation or the, the new models are breathtaking for, for, for the girls in a fashion show. Uh, the new dress are breathtaking. Very good, perfect. So that was, uh, there are actually a lot of examples. Accomplished, what is accomplished? Accomplished is a something that was made. Something finished already that you were able yes. to do. Very good. Successful is easy. Yes, to get uh, something right, do, doing right. Very good, something that, yeah, you made it with a good uh, efficiency or in a, with a good result, right? Very nice. Ardent, what is ardent? Ardent, Elizabeth Ardent, Elizabeth Ardent. Ardent. <laughs> enthusiastic. Enthusiastic, very yes. good. Good. It, it, it's like the next eager. <laughs> okay. The other one is eager. What is eager? That is very common actually in English, to be honest with you. Yes, it's, it's, it's some kind of the before word, enthusiastic, something like that. That is it. So it's like when you really want to do something, when you are looking okay, for okay, a lot. Yes. Very good. How can you use eager in a sentence? I was eager about the speech. I need to, to, to deliver. Very good. So I'm yeah. eager to do this one. So you can say that one. Uh, leave it. What is leave it? Leave it. Leave it is something like uh, um, Wait, in a, in a, in a, angry. Very good, like angry, right? Like, uh, but very angry, actually. So, <laughs> good. Enterprising. Enterprising is the, the, uh, Star Trek, no? Enterprising is, uh, 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 uh. It's like oh, a yeah. way to say entrepreneur. Okay. Very good. So it's like when you want to start something, right? When you are eager to start your business, for example, you are enterprising. Mm -hmm. Good. What is a venturesome? Get an, uh, an, uh, a, an a deal with a, a person that gives you money for doing something. Okay, something like that one. It's like somebody that takes risks, right? That they say, we're going to have an adventure on this new business that we're going to make. 
good, ambitious. What is that? Somebody or something that can go for more. Okay. I want to go for more. Very good. Uh, this is not always bad, right? Sometimes in Spanish it's not good, yes. but ambitious is good. I mean, if you want to achieve something and you get ambitious, of course, you are going to learn a lot of words every day in English. So that is very ambitious. Good. Go getting. What is a go getting? It's uh, something like that. Something like the, 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 the first one, like ambitious, like one yeah. more. Yeah, one more. You, you see something, you want to go and get it, right? Life changing, that is an easy one. Life changes some experience or, or situation that uh, give you the, uh, to do something different with your life. Very good. So yeah, some experience that change your life, right? So yeah. like English, good. Empowering, what is empowering? Giving the, the, the values for someone to do something. Very good. That is it. When you provide the, mm -hmm. the resources. Uh -huh, mm -hmm. the the resources that's right. Very good. Perfect. Encouraging. We checked that already. Uh, but this is, yeah, it's an adjective, but it's kind of the same. Uh, rival. What is rival? Rival is something like a content, something like uh, is the opponent. Very good. Like the opening of something. Lofty. What is lofty? Lofty. Lofty. Opposition. It's a position that is most likely very high, right? Something very, uh -huh. very high. Good. Uh, daring. What is daring? There is there is there When you do something that is not expected, very good. Something that is not expected that you, uh, yeah, I mean you definitely um, do something like everybody's not expecting to do and it's not always bad bold what is bold to get some special encouragement something like that okay very good so it's uh yeah like when the you... ability to take risk it says very good perfect so something like you are bold you go for it right so you are able to uh impressive what is to be impressive Mm -hmm. some, some something that that something uh, amazing something like you are unexpected or like you are very wonderful about that. spectacular spectacular yes. good very good remarkable what is something remarkable remarkable something that we remember something that get an impact in your life Okay, that is it. Something that, yeah, gives you more, right? Stunning. What is stunning? Stunning is... Extremely beautiful. Very good. Stunning is like amazing. Something very nice, right? Good. Baffling. What is baffling? Embarrassing. It may be something embarrassing, something that you don't like, something overwhelming, something like that. Mm -hmm. Monumental. The stadium? <laughs> so okay. big, something big, right? So, yeah, that is something like mm, a lot, a lot of something. Good. Admirable. To look up to. Very good. So, somebody that you really, uh, that person is inspiring you, right? Something like that. Sensational, that's very easy. What is sensational? It's uh, extremely good. Extremely good. Very nice. And the last one here on this part, because we have more below. Incredible. What is incredible? Uh, 
Unbelievable. Unbelievable how many words have we learned today. A lot of vocabulary. Good, look at that. As I told you, there are a lot of adjectives. So let's check the ones that are not that common because we don't have that much time. Affordable, what is affordable? That you can handle the cost. Very good, that you can pay for it, right? Rich, we know cost effective. And let's analyze cost effective. What is cost effective? Cost effective. That it's worth it. That is worth it. Very okay. good. Nice. Uh, exorbitant. What is that? Sorry. Too high. Too high. Yeah. Very good. Nice. Uh, knockout. What is a knockout? It's a kit that I <laughs> Go go to the to the yeah, something that that push or, or kid you that may fall down. Yes, yeah, something that shocks you out, right? Something that yeah. you you are speechless. We know what is valuable. Uh, what about attainable? Achievable. Achievable. Very good. Uh, what is science proved? But it's something that is proven scientifically. Very good. Something that is possible to be proved uh, because there are facts about that one. Bargain. What is a bargain? Something cheaper. Something cheap. Yes, yeah, something that you are able to, to check into that one. Massive, we know. Discounted, we know. Attractive. Not worthy. What is that one? Something that you can ignore. Okay, something that you can eat, you know, very good. Limited time, what is that? Is um, it's the word that you use for this offer is just for limited time, just for the next few days or something very, like that. It's the that Windows time frame. Yeah, the like Black Friday is coming that uh, they say mm -hmm. that just for this week, you are going to have this TV. Mm -hmm. Only a thousand dollars when yesterday was in $1,001. Fully booked. What is fully booked? Complete. 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 No Almost room failed. for more people, right? So yeah. no more rooms, no more uh, seats, anything like that. Refundable. You can get your money back. back. That is very common in uh, the stores in the US, right? Refundable. Almost everything is refundable there. Uh, negotiable. You can get better price. Very good. So yeah, you will be able to to bargain, right? So below market average, what might be that? Under the the average, under the, the normal of the market. That is it. So there is a pricing, and that is below that one, right? Yes. Too good to miss. Uh huh. What is that? That is the best offer. So yeah. You cannot avoid mm -hmm. buying this one. You cannot lose. <laughs> you cannot lose. It. Good. Subsidized. Mm. You paid a part in something that the government order pay other parts. Very good. That is it. Something like that one, right? So somebody's paying for part of this that you are going to pay for. Okay. Upscale. Only for you. <laughs> Might be something like that one, yeah. So it's something that is like designed as a unique thing, right? Yes. Something that is, yeah, good. Uh, luxurious. Luxurious is uh, uh, the most cost, maybe. Very expensive, very good. Mm -hmm. And what is budget friendly? Everybody can get it. Yeah, everybody can get one. We know what is optimal, exclusive. What is time sensitive? Mm -hmm. Depending on the time, the moment Depends. of the, yes. 
very good. So yeah, that will be it. So depending on the time, depending on so many things. We know what is tempting, efficacious is exactly what is asked in Spanish. Economical, attainable, sensible. Mm, okay, profitable, what is profitable? You can earn money. Very good, so you are going to be able to get some money if you invest in this one, it's very profitable. And let's check the other one. So we know what is certified, verified, what is risk free? Is free. Well, the first time is not true because no, nothing is risk free. Okay. But... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Same. It's safe. Okay. Yeah, it's safe. You are not going to risk anything. Uh, what is something that is tested? Proved. Previously proved. Okay, very good. Um, and uh, okay, we have proven, right? So maybe tested. the different uh, tested. So mm -hmm. yeah, proving is more for facts and testing is more for things. Um, what is solution oriented? This specific goes to this uh, span of this public or this type of customer. Very good. So if you have this problem, this is going to be the solution, right? So mm -hmm. you will be able to solve. You are focused on the solution. Mm -hmm. Vetted. Not permitted? No. This is not permitted. This is like when you want to mm, only no. vet and not as a veterinarian, but just a vet. It might be like something. an investigation. Very good. That will be. Okay. Check, something like that. Very nice. That's the one. Non negotiable. Well, in at the back means that only the beneficiary can 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 reach the title. Okay, very good. So we cannot negotiate. It's like this. If you want it, we are gonna make it. So only one price. Yeah, one fixed price, like in Guatemala, that they say only this, only this, right? So. Oh, for example, there are Values. there are checks that are not negotiable. Exactly. Means that only the beneficiary can make it cash. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is another example. Yeah, that is a very very uh, financial oriented, right? Very good. Mm -hmm. Let's see, quality control, reliable, legitimate, uh, lifetime. What is that one? <laughs> is this is last for for the whole life. <laughs> yeah, all your whole life, right? So very good. We know why it's expert, a market tested. What do you think is no fail? Always works. Always works. So it's guarantee is going to do something. Foolproof. <laughs> <laughs> it is difficult. <laughs> it's the same meaning. <laughs> like a children proof? Uh, this is foolproof. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, it's like anybody can do it, right? So it's going mm -hmm. to be very easy to do. Flawless. Flawless, I knew that. Flawless, flawless. Mm. Flawless is no error, it's, it's the best, it's proven and are perfect. I found something. That is just perfect. Very good. Something like perfect with no imperfections. Nice. Yeah. I will know what is absolute, but what is a surefire? Surefire. Surefire. Fire protector? Maybe. Fire. Surefire. Mm -hmm. Anybody? Is something like sure, sure. For sure, something is yeah. for sure that is going to be like that. Good. Steady. What is steady? Steady, steady, steady. I know that. Steady. Steady. Is. Like fix? No. Yeah, it's. Yeah, it might be something like fix. It's like 
uh, for example, something that is with a very good balance, that it doesn't move that much, right? Mm -hmm. Static, for example. Kind of static, yeah. It's possible to that it's moved, but it's, it's static. Conclusive, what is conclusive? Conclusive. Conclusive is uh, conclusive. Something that is proven and is right, uh, you can refute. Okay, so it, it goes to a conclusion and that is it, right? Yes. Ingenious. Something that is uh, clear, it's uh, good, very good. Very smart. <laughs> A smart, clever, a good solution for a problem. We know what is innovative, advanced. What is cutting edge? It's like something new in technology, like the, the, the newest. Okay, so yeah, it's like state of the art technology device or something like that one, right? Okay, we know what is superior, exceptional, game changing, uh, groundbreaking. What is, well, what is groundbreaking? Groundbreaking, break, break, ground, groundbreaking. No, very sure. I'm sorry? Something that is uh, groundbreaking, something that like has to be with innovation, something that is okay. new. Very good. That will be it. And uh, what is flagship? Flagship is uh, the the main ship. Is uh, the the um, uh, I think in the business is it could be the, the the principal office, the principal place, the the principal factor, something like that. Yeah, something like moving forward to uh, something like that. Uh, we know what is warranted, promised, protected. Uh, what is assured? Assured, assured. Secure. Something that is, yeah. Confirm, to reconfirm. Okay, very good. Nice. What is collateralized? Both ways. I'm sorry? Both ways. Yeah, both, both ways. ways. Mm -hmm. There are consequences, let's say, for both ways uh, if you don't achieve this contract or anything like that. Nice. Okay. Um, Bankable. 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 I'm bankable. Oh, bankable. It's something Ooh. that can give you profit to get you to run something. Okay, See? very good. Yeah. It might be something like that one and also something like for sure that you are sure that it's going to yes. work. Uh, it says it says acceptable to or at a bank. Very good. That will be nice. We know what is popular, promising, painless. What is painless? Without pain. Without pain. Very good. The other one is uh, this yes. What is this yes? Is something like risk, uh, more risk, more risk. Okay, something that, yeah, it might be at risk. Uh, tamper proof, what is that? Tamper proof, tamper proof, tamper proof is. Okay, tamper proof is a. If you do with your hands, you can manipulate it. 
Very good. Yes. Cannot be manipulated. That you are for sure that this process, anything, uh, is not possible to be manipulated by others. So, immutable. Unbreakable. Okay. Very good. Nice. You can see a lot of words right now, right? So I know that it's not the same to say pretty or any other things. So let's continue reading a little bit more about this one. Coherence markers. This is going to be for, let's see, Marcus. Okay. Current markers. Current marker are con conversion conversational words and phrases we use with no logical connection between different ideas. There are no meaningful standalone words. Yet they play a huge, a huge role in making your presentation copy more compelling. Take a look at these two versions of those ad copy. Uh, your skin natural all skips, skips uh, silky and soulful. As you age, it becomes less elastic and the production of oil slows down. Again, skin cows do. The hydrated skin. Your skin natural oil keep keep it silky and supple. But as you age, your skin becomes less elastic and the production of oils slows down. That is why again can cows do. The hydrated skin. The volatile current marker helps digest the decline by establishing logical connection between the ideas. Research shows that adding such like such links to any copy or speech improves clarity and boosts persuasion. Therefore, sprinkle some current marker in your presentation to help the reader or listener mentally justify what you are saying. Very good, the coherence markers. This is something that we checked the last module. Do you remember that uh, sometimes we need to use this kind of words for us to, to get a better idea. So it's important actually. And remember that probably we're going to be writing essays in the future and the other modules. So these things are going to be very, very important for you to understand and use. So everything is going to be better and clear for the people that is reading about this one. And so here are some coherence markers. Uh, we're just going to check on that one. So now do it. So go ahead because due to that's why given that here's the deal. That's right. Ditto. By contrast, big news. Even so, beyond that. Why? For starters, likewise. What's the bottom line? You might be wondering. By now you should. Better still, the general conclusion is that compound this with what does this mean for you in inferring from above? Just imagine you've tried everything, but you start to worry that. Let me guess, admit it. What's the catch or is it? I know that's what you're thinking, right? But one thing's for sure. Let me say this straight. Now consider it this way. It gets better or worse. Uh, but here's the kicker. As if that's not enough, best of all. So all these words, if you use them to uh, put together ideas that are maybe similar or maybe different, or to reinforce something that you're saying, or to get an idea together to other idea that you presented already, is going to help you. That's why we check that in the previous these are, these are like connectors connectors between the in the middle of the of the speech that is true so that is it uh maybe uh, the ones that we checked before it was only uh, let's say and but and so on and things like that. but you can see that there are many 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 that we can use okay so these are the things that are important for us to use in a presentation very nice and the last one are metaphors. We have a few minutes, so let's see. Uh, Juan Miguel, could you please help me with this one? 
metaphors, yeah? Yep. Metaphors. A metaphor is a figure of a speech used to represent or symbolize another object or concept. For example, time is the greatest gift given to you. Writers love using metaphors. Ah, metaphors, yeah, <laughs> okay. Metaphors eh, to add depth and eloquence their narrative. narrative. At the same time, the presenters use this, use this, sorry, eh, use this to help the reader picture and in, in an intangible concept. Uh, a research fund metaphors help with persuasion by helping the reader or listener form a concrete mental image of the discussed concept. For example, you can say that your printing equipment works fast, but how fast do you mean? A metaphor can help make it more clear, X, e, e, G, or printing machines an equivalent of Ferrari in terms of speed. Okay, so that is it. Uh, I believe that we know what uh, the metaphors in Spanish, right? So it's going to be exactly the same in English. Maybe the only thing is that the way that we write that one are kind of different. For example, like father, like son. So it's totally different than the way that we say that in Spanish. Okay, and here are some metaphors and things like that. So this is the last part of this thing. Good, do you have any questions so far? Please share that link. <laughs> oh, of course I will do, I will do it right away, of course. Yeah, a lot of things that we can use. And as you can see, there are a, a lot of vocabulary, a lot of things there that we can use. Yeah. Good, my friends. So we're going to check then the, um, uh, the attendance and then let's go to bed, right? Don't go to party tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's see, let me just check, where is it, here is it. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Iriana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Jorvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Embrán Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Good. Jessica Janari Cortez Diaz. I'm here. Good. Zuleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernandez. Present. Good. And Irwin Lagos Andrade. Present teacher. Very good, perfect. So. And uh, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very good night. See you on Thursday. Remember that tomorrow, no class. So rest and uh, dream in English. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Bye, bro. Bye. Night. Thank you, good night.